Hallelujah. So if you're taking notes this morning, let's title this Grace for Finishing. Or you can call it Grace for Completion. Grace for Finishing or Grace for Completion. Now, we're going to take our text from the book of uh, Second Chronicles. And I'm going to go through a few scriptures this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22 to 23. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22 to 23. The Lord laid it on my heart to share with us this morning on this topic, grace for finishing. Because towards the end of the year last year, God started to say to us that one of the things he wants to do in 2016 is finish up things that he started last year. So a lot of things which he started, which are not completed yet, he wants to finish them up. Maybe that breakthrough, he wants to finish it. That job, he wants to finish it. That career, he wants to finish it. That relationship thing, he wants to finish it. That promotion, he wants to finish it. But a lot of the times, we as believers don't finish, you know, we don't get to finish the things that God has started. And so, he laid it upon my heart that he wants to release the grace upon you and myself to complete and to finish what has been started in our lives. Can I have an amen for that? Amen. Okay, so Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22 and 23. It says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth are the Lord of God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you, all his people? The Lord is God be with him, let him go. Okay, I'm just going to, so, so bear with me because I'm just going to take us step by step this morning. Now, if you turn to the book of Ezra, chapter 1, the book of Ezra, chapter 1. Ezra was a scribe when the children of Israel left uh, Babylon and then they came back to the promised land. So when you read the book of Ezra, you read the book of Nehemiah, you read the book of Zechariah, Zerubbabel, all of them lived around the same time. Daniel was, you know, he was, he was in a foreign land. Esther too was in foreign land. Mordecai was in foreign land. So when you read some of those stories, they are stories that were around the same time. Now, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. He says, Now in the first year of, king, of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So you find almost exactly the same thing repeated by a different writer in the scriptures. Which means, you know, they were just writing, everybody was just writing their own because of history. But you find the same story repeated. Now, when you go to the book of Isaiah chapter 45, Isaiah chapter 45, just want to go through this systematically to build a foundation. Isaiah chapter 45 from verse 1. He says, Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, the same king, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two lift gates, and the gate shall not be shut. He says, I will go before thee. And that will be somebody's portion here in the name of Jesus. He says, I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brass, and caught in sunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasure of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by name. I have surnamed thee, 
though thou hast not known me, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside, thee, beside me. I guided thee, though thou hast not known me. Now, let me give you a little bit of background. Prophet Isaiah lived like 150 years before Cyrus the king. So Isaiah, by the spirit of the Lord, prophesied that there was going to be a king of Persia who will release the Israelites from the foreign land and send them back to their country. Now, we do not know how it happened, but when Cyrus became king, maybe somebody prophesied to him, maybe he read his three books, maybe somebody told him, he got to know that 150 years before he was born, God had already programmed what he was going to do. And you see, that's what gives me, com gives me confidence because there's somebody who in here who might be going through one thing or the other. You're thinking, is God thinking about me? Even before you were born, God knew the things you were going to go through. Even before the age you are in right now, God knew the things you're going to go through. God is a God who talks about the hand right from the beginning. So 150 years before the king was born, Isaiah had prophesied before him that, look, God is, is sending you to the world and your assignment is to release the people of God to go back to their land. So when Cyrus became king and then he knew that it was not by the work of his hand, he got in there. The first year, he just said to them, he said, you guys can go back. He said, anybody wants to go, just go back to your land, go and build the temple, go and build the walls. And so you find Zerubbabel going back to lay the foundation of the temple again. And then when you read the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah went back to build all the, the, um, the fence round about Jerusalem again. Now, that is not where I'm going. That is the first part of it. Now, what is the correlation of these two words? Right from the beginning of the year, God said, it's my year of greater glory. It's a year of increase. It's a year that I'm going to finish. It's a year that I'm going to do a new thing in your life. Now, before 2016, God knew what would happen. But do you know that the fact that God said it is not foolproof that there's not going to be adversity or problems along the way? In fact, after the king released them, and I'll read a few scriptures for us to see this, they faced a lot of opposition. Even after God had said to Cyrus, release them, and then Cyrus released them, Cyrus said, anything you need, I'm giving it to you. When they got to the land, they faced a lot of opposition. Now, if you go into the book of Ezra, let's just take it step by step. Ezra, uh, the book of Ezra again, from chapter 1. So we read in the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, the king released them and told them to go. But then by the time you get to chapter 2, he was talking about the number of people who went back to Jerusalem as at that time. Now, when you go to, let's start from uh, chapter 3. Now, from chapter 3, he, he said, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. He said, now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel. So, again, when you go to the book of Ze Zechariah, you see uh, Zechariah talking about uh, Zerubbabel. He said, who are this mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. He said, the hand of Zerubbabel has started it. It will finish it. So, it's the same Zerubbabel he's talking about. So he says, now in the second year of their coming into the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Shelter, and Joshua, the son of uh, Josadak, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all that were come out of captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forth the work of the house of the Lord. So they started the work of God. And then verse 10, he says, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priest in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. But then let's go to verse uh, chapter 4. This is where you see trouble. Chapter 4, starting from verse 1, he says, Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity Builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. He said, Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of their fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esau 
Hadon, the king of Hassor, which brought us up either. Now verse 3 says, But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Now verse 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia, and in the reign of Aseros, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, I won't go into all the details. Basically, what happened was King Cyrus released them. But then they decided to frustrate them. For several years, different kings, they couldn't build what they were supposed to build. Now, maybe there's somebody in here this morning in this house. There are things that you started a long time ago, but you never completed. This is your year that God is visiting you for you to complete it. Maybe there's somebody here, you started a career. In fact, I know a particular lady, you know, she started a particular thing. She did this course. She didn't finish. She went for another course. She didn't finish. So she's always jumping from one thing to another. Maybe you are like that. You, you do different courses. You don't even finish. You, do, you don't know why. When it's just almost at the end, when you should finish, you just get tired and then you leave it. God is visiting you this year to make sure that you finish. Is somebody with me this morning at all? Maybe you are somebody here you get into a relationship and everything is fine, everything is going on fine, there's no problem at all. When it's close to, you know, getting committed, all of a sudden, problem happens. And you can't figure it out. You don't know where it's coming from. But this year, by the grace of Jehovah, God is visiting you to make sure that things are completed in the name of Jesus. Now, what does it mean for something to be completed? I will give you a few things. Number one, it means that that thing is concluded. That's number one. It means that that thing is brought to a close. Number two, it means that that thing is finalized. Number three, it means that that thing is brought to fruition. It means something is completed or concluded. It means something is brought to an end. It means something is finalized. It means something is brought to fruition. And you see, as I'm preaching this, I'm also preaching to myself. Because when you say something is not completed, it means that thing is abandoned. Some of us, we have abandoned projects. Some of us, we have abandoned relationships. Some of us, we have abandoned career. But God wants to visit you. God wants to visit you. I want you to help me turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor, Say, neighbor, this year, God is going to be visiting you. You will be completing everything that your hand started in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the book of Zechariah, let's, let's read this together. And then I, I will give you some of the reasons why we don't complete what we start. We start. The book of Zechariah um, says this. The book of Zechariah chapter 4, I believe. Chapter 4, starting from verse 6. Are we there? Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Then he answered and spoke unto me, This is the word of the Lord. And you can put in your name there. He said, Say ye, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts. So, it's not by your skill. He says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before a yitayo? He said, You shall become a plain. He shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouts and crying, His grace, His grace. Can I say this to you? If you have papers in the home office for whatever reason, and the home office says no, if God doesn't help you, nobody can help you. I know a family, you know, the whole family, they stamped, go out of the country. No. And then on the opposite page where they said no, they stamped, we have allowed them again. It can only be God. So he says in there, he says, 
Zerubbabel, he said, the mountain will not stand before you. He said, but when you have removed, when you have completed it, you will say, this is grace. This is grace. This is not me. This is not me. This is not my power. This is not my skill. This is God in action. And I see somebody in here that, you know, maybe you have been longing to complete certain things. By the grace of God, God is visiting you this year so that you are going to be completing those things in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, so quickly, let me just give us seven reasons. Why do people not finish what they have started? Why do people not finish what they have started? Number one, satanic opposition. So Satan frustrates. You know that place that we read? They decided to frustrate them. Many times that you go through challenges, Satan is only looking to frustrate because he knows that if delay is too long, it can become denier. You know, as Christians, we say delay is not denier. That's true. But if delay becomes too long, it can become denier. If you are hoping for something too long, you can give up. I've seen people give up their life, you know, committed suicide or do things rash because they waited for too long and then they got tired. So at times, the reason why people don't finish what they started is because there's a satanic opposition there. Number two, why is it that we don't finish what we start? Number two is because we get discouraged. We get tired. Like Elijah. You know, the time that um, the wife of Heab was chasing after Elijah. Elijah that had done great things for God. All of a sudden, he said, kill me. He said, I will just die now. I don't know whether you get discouraged, but there are times I get discouraged. But then when I get discouraged, I encourage myself again in the Lord. When I get discouraged, I look at the, the, good, the things that are working fine for me. Uh, there, there was like, was it like two years ago? Or, or, or it was like almost everything wasn't really working. And then God said last year, he said, year of restoration. And at the beginning, it didn't look like that. And then towards the end of it, it started like that. It started like that. It started like that. And right now, even though everything has not clicked, I can see. And when I look at it now, and I'm not where I want to be, I still look at it and say, God, thank you. Because when I compare myself to most of my friends, I know that I've received the help of God. And there are some of us that you are here right now, you are not where you want to be. Maybe you thought, oh, you would have had all your children like 10 years ago. Maybe you thought, oh, things would have been working by now. Maybe you think you would be in that particular career. Maybe you think you would have finished that course. But if you look deeply, God has helped you. And he who has started a good work is able to finish it. So one of the reasons why we don't finish is because we get discouraged. But when you get discouraged, you need to encourage yourself. Is somebody with me this morning? Number three, why, what is the reason why we don't finish the things that we have started? Number three is because we don't have a good strategy. So God might say to you, go and do this particular thing. It took me a long time to understand that the fact that God has said something is going to happen, if you don't have the right strategy, it might not happen. There was a particular time that the children of Israel, they, you know, after they went to Jericho, God said to them, don't, don't take their cost thing. And then they took their cost thing. And then they went to fight with Hai, a little town. And then they were defeated soundly. And then they tried, to, you know, they were, they were all discouraged. And God said to them, God said, when you are going to war again, he said, have a strategy. So when they went again, they, they pretended as if Hai was defeating them. But they had set an ambush. Now, you are doing that particular career. If you don't have a strategy, you might discover that along the line, you don't have enough to finish it. You are doing a particular project. Oh, you want to get a mortgage or you want to do a particular, you want to buy a particular. What is your strategy? You might say, oh, this year by the grace of God, because the word of the Lord has come. Okay, every, every month, I'm going to be setting aside maybe 500 pounds. You need a strategy. So we even, even though God has given you the right word, there is a need for a strategy to achieve it. There's a particular friend of mine, um, we were talking, and he said this to me, he said he wanted to migrate from Lagos. He works with MTN, you know, um, one of the managers. And I said, why do you want to migrate to Canada? He said, because when I see your other children, Hamba, Hevelin, I want my own children to, to have the taste of, you know, Western world. Okay, so I thought, I said, okay, but you are being well paid. You can travel anytime you want to travel. So I said to him, I said, take my advice from somebody 
who lives in the Western world, but who also lives in Lagos. Because whether you like it or not, I go to Lagos. So I said, I live in Lagos, I live in Nigeria, and I live here. I said, don't resign your job like that. Because if you resign your job, you're a manager with them. When you come to the Western world, number one, you want to be a manager again. Most likely, if it's, not a tech, if it's a technical role, that's fine. If it's not a technical role and you have a heavy Nigerian accent, you will not be manager because you need to be able to communicate with the people under you. So because of that, even though you know what to do, you might struggle to become a manager straight away. And then when you think about it, you're going to think back and forth that, who sent me on this errand? Why did I leave my job? And then he was, he was, he was listening to me. I said, if I were you, even though you feel in your spirit that God is leading you, I would have a strategy. So he said, what would be the strategy? I said, number one, I would consider somewhere like Canada because they are so friendly with immigration. I said, secondly, if I wanted to go, since your wife is also well-educated, she works in the bank, I will package her to be the first person and then all of us will be the dependents on her. Then I will take a leave, like a study leave, and say six months, I'm going, I want to go and study, I will just look for one course. Then I will go to Canada or wherever, make sure I say to my family, then I will go back. When I watch it for like maybe 18 months, if it's working, then I will throw my resignation letter and say, you guys take your job and then I will go. Now, why am I saying that? When there's no strategy, even when God has said something is going to happen, you might find out that you are struggling with it. I listened to Reverend Sam Adeyemi one time. He said, he said he was trying to do a particular project. He did the first time, it didn't work. He did the second time, it didn't work. He said, and he went back to God and said, ah, but I thought you were leading me to do this particular thing. He said, then he dropped in his spirit that why don't you do it this way? So he went, he backed off again, came again, attacked it from a different angle. He said, then he walked. He said, okay, I got the strategy wrong. That's why I failed. So a lot of us, most of the time, we do a particular thing, it doesn't work. You're thinking, ah, but God, you said I should pursue. I will, you know, I will, I will catch up. It will be restored. So why is it not restored? Because you are going about it the wrong way. So, but when you have the right strategy, everything then works. Is somebody with me this money at all? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, you need to have the right strategy. So which number are we now? Number five. Is it number four? Number four. So why is it that we don't finish the things that we start? Number four, we do not have patience or we're not ready to persevere. You know, in this Western world, uh, you're in a relationship, then the person says to you, you are stupid. Or something. And then everybody goes to their home. Nobody, you know, breaks the relationship. Uh, 10 years marriage, broken like that. 15 years marriage, broken like that. 20 years marriage, broken like that. And then somebody said, why is it that we don't have a lot of divorce, you know, back in Nigeria or Africa? I said, because the women endure a lot. And we need to celebrate our women. Eh? It, that's not to say women don't treat our women right. We treat them right. But you see, back from home, the women are like, okay, uh, if my dad, if my, if my mom is saying something to my dad, and my dad, if my mom says to my dad, okay, I need a freezer, I need a fridge, and my dad does not have the money, you know the way men does. Men will just use braggado. He might say, hey, use my hand to buy the fridge. If you turn my hand into money, she won't say nothing. She will wait. Later on, she might then say, okay, dear, but you know what you said that time. What I mean is that we need this. But if it's here, okay. You need a fridge, you say it, and they say, okay, is it me that you are talking to like that? Okay, they send you out of the house. Why? Because it's equal right in this country. Mm -hmm. But you see, the, the truth of the matter is God, does not, God wants us to see through the things that we start. God wants, so when we do not persevere, a lot of the things that we do not finish is because just a little bit more, we just gave up. There was one time, let me tell you this story. You know, hopefully I'll be able to finish on this because I want to tell you seven things. There was a particular time that um, a friend of mine, he said he was just inspired to buy kerosene in Nigeria. That was a time that, you know, there was shortage of kerosene. So he bought like um, a tank of kerosene, but he couldn't sell. So he was discouraged. He was just thinking, ah, why did I even buy this thing? So he, he even forgot, because he borrowed the money, he forgot the tank, he forgot everything there. He said then, one of the time, and the tank was in a campus in Elorin, you know, Uni Elorin. He said, then all of a sudden, there was shortage of kerosene, all of a sudden. He said he sold it several times the amount he bought it. 
He said, but he had borrowed money and he couldn't even repay the money originally. He said, so he was emotional that, ah, God, have you forgotten me? You see, when he was sharing that story with me, that was the time I was going through certain things. And the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me that, see you, the fact that something doesn't come together at the same time does not mean I've forgotten you. There are times that God will not explain to you. So you'll be thinking, ah, but why, 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 why? And God is like, just hang on there. I'll tell you another story. One time, I, we bought a piece of land, my wife and myself. It was around redemption camp. About 20, 27 plots. And at the time, there was no road. There was nothing. When I bought it, it was like something I would consider like a mistake. But you see, there's no mistake with God. Because I gave somebody money. I had never visited the place because the person said it was good. When I visited the place, I didn't know what to say. I couldn't just say, just give me my money. Because once you give the money, you can't get it back. And I thought, ah, what will I do with this land? So we just left it. We were just tired. The land was just there. Can I say to you that recently they, they moved the camp. So they now have a new camp. Some of us who follow Holy Ghost, they move it to somewhere called Shemawa. It's only like five minutes from that land. When I heard, I was dancing. I said, I've hit goals. I said, I've hit. This is, you're talking of six years, seven years. God is not obliged to explain to you why you are going through what you are going through right now. But if you only persevere, you find out that people who finish are people who persevere. Is somebody with me this morning at all? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Say, neighbor. You need to persevere. So which number are we right now? Why is it that we do not finish what we start? Number five, because we do too many things at the same time. And I'm talking to myself as well. Preach. <laughs> when you do too many things, you struggle to finish. It's okay to do many things, but you must come to a stage where you say, okay, this, 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 these three things, all the others, I don't want to do them. Because if you do too many things, you will not do, you will not finish none. Okay? So if you're doing too many things, maybe that's why you're not finishing. Number six, why do we not finish what we started? Because, num because, because of error of judgment. Maybe you shouldn't even have gone into that thing in the first case. Oh, you saw that guy. Very nice, no pimples. Handsome, rich, he has car, he has whatever. You enter into that relationship. Then you see where you find yourself. There's a particular story, I will quote it. Because it also affects me. My younger brothers, I have two younger brothers. Some of, some of you, you've never seen them. They, they live in this country. The last one was living with me in Birmingham, you know, for a time. And there was this, we were in another church, not this church, the other church, uh, Sandon Road. And there was this babe, dark, slim, she's pretty. Take it, she's pretty. So he fancied her. So they were Christians and all that. But there was another guy who had a car. One Pujo put your car like that. And the girl just said no to my, she was like my, my, to my brother that where are we coming from? <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> you, you don't even know your mate. I took it personal. You know the reason why I took it personal? <laughs> because number one is my brother. Number two is handsome. So I cannot see, I thought the girl should have seen his future, not the present. Last one is because of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. I'll read this to us. It says, For God hath not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can I say this to you, ladies and gentlemen? If there are things that you have attempted previously, and I'm talking to myself right now, and you have not succeeded, or you have not finished it, please go back this year and do it. Is there a career, is there a professional exams that you started, you didn't finish it? Please go back and do it.
Is there an application you did maybe with the home office and it didn't work? Please go back and do it. Is it that you wanted to get a mortgage and you thought, where will I get the money? Please go back and do it. Is it your driving test? Uh, somebody told me that somebody passed a driving test, you know, recently. I won't tell the name so that you won't mob her. But I, I thought that was good. Driving test again. Bought a new car. A lady in the house. So all you guys are in the house. You need to sit up. Quickly go and do it. If the ladies are passing, what are you doing? So if there are things that you have been fearful of before, please go back and do it. Now, let me, let me round up by saying this. When my wife did her driving test, because she, she learned to drive in this country, I cannot remember how many times she did it. She did it, she will fail, she did it, she will fail. Maybe she will remember, I don't know. She did. So after a while, she refused to tell me. The day she passed, she just came and said, I have passed. I was always like, maybe you have seen a vision. And then she showed me. And I'm like, so when did you do it? He said, I didn't want you to discourage me. And I, I don't discourage you. I, dis I don't discourage people. She said, I just decided not to tell you. So she went after it. Now, somebody will do it like two, three times. And then you are like, I can't pass that me. I can't do it. It's not meant for me. You know, some, some people will try maybe manual car. I say, okay, I've tried manual car. It's not working. Okay, you know what? I'll just buy automatic car. Manual car is not for me. No, no, no. It's for you. You tried it a few times, it, do, it didn't work. Try it again. So many people who succeed, they have tried over and over and over and over again before it succeeds. There's a project we're doing right now, you know, in Lekki. The first time, you know, I bought that land. At the time I went to Nigeria, I felt God wanted us to buy the land. And I went and saw the land and I didn't like, it was another land and I didn't like that particular land. So I, I thought, you know, well, I'm not going to buy this land. So, and then I, I went to sleep. And it was like somebody woke me up and said, buy that land. So I called the person and said, okay, I'm giving you this money as a deposit. I'll give you the rest of it. So he said, okay, fine, that's fine. When he wanted to make the papers of that land, he discovered that the person who sold it to him originally actually cheated. He did not belong to that person. So we then had to go to the chiefs around and complain. So they said, okay, we can't retrieve that land, but we'll give you another piece of land. They now decided to give him another piece of land, which were together, like 20, that had global C of O. When they gave it to him, apparently he transferred it over to me. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, this is why I wanted you to buy his other land. And then I went to them, I said, okay, this other 20, can I buy it? I didn't have money. But they, they were like, where is this? You, because you came from the UK, you, you think this is how we reason here. They are like, we want to buy for people, we want to sell to people who have cash. Then he wanted to sell it to somebody else high in the society. Last minute, when the person was meant to buy, the person discovered that two of the plots already belonged to me and I wasn't ready to give it up. And because all of them were together, we see of all. So he pulled out. When I went back, they said, okay, how much did you even say you had? I told them, he said, okay, come and be paying little by little. That was how a substantial amount of land we were able to buy. Now, for several years, we sat on it, couldn't build because there was no money. And then all of a sudden, last year, two people just came. They knew one of my friends and said, um, that your friend said he wanted to build somewhere that, you know, we actually wanted to build. Can we be paying him installment? We just give him substantial amount of money. You're talking of God moving on your... In fact, one of them, I have never seen him. He lives in Canada. They just transferred all the money and then we started the project just like that. Now, where am I going? God does not have that obligation to explain to you the things you are going through in the present. But if you understand how God works, you just stay there and say, you know what? God is always right. He's always right. Everything is working together for my good. And you see, if you can stay there, you discover that you finish everything which you have started this year. Is somebody with me this morning at all? I want us to rise to our feet right now.